After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. And so we've got the hole in the top cut. Time for the hole in the bottom. And hope it all slides through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing we found out or figured out too is right on the edge of this, right about here, is that plywood support that's been supporting the hull. Um, so when this pops out, there's gonna be plywood underneath there, so that isn't gonna fit fully in place, but that's gonna end up having to go when, gotta figure out a solution for that. Up my shorts. <laughs> All right, now don't fall in that hole. After having spent the previous day lifting the case in and out of its general position a half a dozen times. This was the first time we'd be able to drop it through the bottom and get a real feel for how it will sit when it's bonded in. So the original position of this would have put it roughly here. So this top edge would be right in about this position here. So you can see how much space we actually gain by pushing this outboard. A lot of space on deck, but also a lot of shoulder room through here. So it's gonna make it, when we have the cabinets, it's gonna make it much more comfortable going forward or aft. Okay, so I decord now, uh, roughly a half an inch, and I will just be top and bottom, of course, through the hull. Um, and I will be just filling that in with thickened resin, which will actually have some chopped strand in it as well. set at an angle of about three and a half degrees. Uh, measure that when we're dry fitting it. So the idea then is to get this board to that same three and a half degrees. And what I can do is I can actually glass in this fairly easy to be able to get our shape. And we're doing the same thing for the top. Just using wood wedges then to make sure we're getting that same angle. Do it here and here, and then I know that all the way across there is going to be our 3.5. Before we can make the fiberglass flanges themselves, Matt is still going through with our total boat structural putty and making a cove or fillet at the joint. Thank you. 
taking our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass, each flange was going to be made of three sheets, all 600 millimeters long, but ranging in width from 300 millimeters down to 250, and finally 200. We'll get a methacrylate applied to it along here and then thicken resin for this area um, above here. And take a bridge then, in case you just rest directly above that or on that, pressing in, we'll probably clamp it or press against the back side here. I'm gonna dry fit it and, and check to make sure all this is right. Hopefully I don't have to go through and redo this again because that was not a, the easiest process for this one. End of a busy work day and after getting that dagger board case in place and uh, getting like a little cut up along the way, I think we decided that we need to have some fun tonight and relax. So we are headed over to Tucker's boat where he's got his griddle out that we got him a few weeks ago and we're gonna grill some burgers and watch a movie tonight. <laughs> And we are trying to enjoy the carver while we can, although there's a big upgrade coming soon too because this boat back here is now Tucker's as well. He's trading up, so you can see that giant cockpit. Soon we'll be having our griddle nights on that. Moving up in the world. <laughs> You've never seen that one, Matt? Tucker's doing a double decker burger with queso. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you need is more cheese on this thing. Are you happy to be relaxing after just doing that dagger board case? That was awesome. That was tough. That was tough, but it was awesome because now it's like the part we've been waiting for, getting that in place. Now the rest of the stuff in that area can fall in. Hopefully, the fuel tank and the floors and cabinets and all that other stuff. I am just happy to sit for a second and not think about the catamaran as much as I love it. I'm enjoying our summertime here because before I know it, this is going to be gone and all these leaves are going to be gone and we're going to be cold as hell in the snow. Hi, Kelly. Oh, such a good boy. So we love hanging out with Tucker, but lately our favorite reason to come by is because he has a new kitten, Calypso, who is just adorable. Thought it was a girl when they first got her, turns out it's a boy. Still keeping the name, but oh, super, super cute. So you are just taking everything in, aren't you? It is not very often that we have this space right next to our tent fully open because usually there's some boat being worked on here because it can fit all of the bigger boats. But because we do have it open, we think for a few more nights, we are taking this opportunity to project a movie onto the tent because we just got a brand new projector. So we kept saying that we're gonna do this one night. Turns out tonight is the night. The sun has just set, so any moment now it should be getting dark enough. You can kind of see the projector up there right now. And we're going to be watching a movie tonight that is a classic for Matt and I, but Gen Z over here never heard of it until we mentioned it to him. Rico. Call me Captain Ron, boss. Everybody does. Hi, Captain Ron. Martin Harvey. Look, guys, you gotta believe me. You have not been kidnapped. Captain Ron is a jerk. 
Oh man, that was so much fun. What a perfect night to watch a movie outside and I'm hoping that we get to do it more. So even if a boat does get put in that spot, hopefully we can uh, find a way to like watch it on another side of the tent, but uh, pretty cool experience. Today is the big day and after multiple rounds of fitting the daggerboard case in, <laughs> that thing is not easy to lift in and out. Matt and I are finally at the stages where we're going to bond it in with our methacrylate bonding agent. It will get glassed later, but this is the last time that we're going to have to try and get it in position and get it in. So Matt's going to prep the area and uh, hopefully we can do it well with just the two of us. The reason I'm using acetone is because the methacrylate that we're using to bond here reacts better to that than it does styrene. So you need to bring your edge that way and then we can flatten it down. Before putting any of our structural putty or methacrylate onto the flanges or openings, we wanted to get the case as close to being in place as possible. And with it weighing approximately 75 pounds, I was quite happy this was going to be the last time I'd have to manhandle it. Well, this side's anyway. in and putting a little bit of thickened resin at the base under where the methacrylate is going to sit. Really can't see much from here. So I have just that little area under here. I have a feeling you're going to need some more. I do too. Okay. In this instance, we're not doing the big batches of the methacrylate like we did before where we'd have to measure out and mix. Um, we're still waiting to get a big batch in order to get some right away because we were ready for this sooner than we thought. We got a gun, so it mixes the two parts kind of together as they come out of tubes, obviously in much smaller amounts, which you, like per ounce makes it more expensive, but for this, a lot more expensive, which is why we're rarely doing it like this, even though um, hopefully, the application is easier than what we normally try and do of like measuring and mixing and bagging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really need some muscles for this, don't you? Oh, crap. On to plan B, back to self mixing. Oh, crap, it's done. Since the case was still pretty close to the flanges we were adhering it to, we had to be very careful to make sure it did not accidentally press against it before it was supposed to, or slide the bonding agent off as we were trying to get it into place. After sticking wedges in the top and then pressing the flange against the back of the case, it was time to clean up for the day and wait for it to cure before we could go in the next day and glass it to the hull side. Mm -hmm. 
make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of MJ Sailing. So this is now the second attempt to glass in these bulkheads. Where progress on glass in the daggerboard casing gets halted by resin that won't cure. Matt gets to work on our starboard fuel tank and we finally get to bond down the last piece of open sole in the owner's hull.